Hey everybody, it's me Lone, back with a Fallout 76 video, and today we're doing a guide on legendary weapons in the game. Before I get started though, I would like to ask all of you, how does my mic sound? I've made a few changes to some settings, and I'm keen to know if it sounds a little bit better, so let me know your feedback in the comments below. So Steel Rain has introduced some changes to legendary effects for weapons in the game, as you know. Number one, it introduced some new legendary effects, and number two, it changed and mostly buffed some of the existing legendary effects. So what I want to do in today's video is make an updated legendary weapons guide for 2021 to tell you the best legendary effects that you can obtain right now in Fallout 76. So if this video does help you, please like it. I would really appreciate it. Subscribe if you're new. But with all that out of the way, let's get to the video. Alrighty, so just like my previous video in 2020 for legendary effects or weapons in the game, I've created three different tiers to categorize legendary effects or weapons based on performance in terms of my opinion. So at the top, we have tier one or the ones in green. Effectively, I believe these to be the best of the best legendary effects of weapons and then we have tier 2 the ones in orange the more middle of the ground legendary effects and then of course we have tier 3 of the ones in yellow and keep in mind we'll be tackling these by star rating so one star two star and three star also as well within each tier i've not ranked them by performance they are listed alphabetically because it's hard sometimes to rank them like that especially when a depends on your build and the weapon, but I will say here and there, which are clearly the standout legendary effects and which are better than other effects in the same tier. Finally, when we talk about damage, keep in mind that in the game, damage is calculated additively, generally, not in a, in a multiplicative sense. And what does that mean? Well, to calculate your weapon output in the game in terms of damage, you take your base damage and you plus, if it's a 50% booster damage, you plus 1.5, you don't times by 1.5. Effectively, it means that all these damage boosts are not as good as they used to be when everything was calculated in a multiplicative sense. So we need to keep that in mind as well. So let's start off with tier one and then we'll go all the way down and then work our way through the other star ratings as well. So number one, we have uh, anti-armor. So it ignores 50% of your target's armor, only alters physical and damage resistance and stacks with stabilize and tank killer um, multiplicatively. So if you're a full health build, Anti-Armor is probably the best uh, legendary effect for you because Anti-Armor in Fallout 76 is such an amazing effect because enemies tend to be fairly highly armored in the game and just generally armored in the game. So you can actually do a lot of damage and respectable amount of damage even if you are a full health build when you have an Anti-Armor weapon. So for sure, use that and if you're a heavy guns user, stack it with Stabilize or if you're a commander or a rifle user, stack it with, stack it with Tank Killer and you're going to have a really, really nice weapon on your head. Hands. But then we got Ar Aristocrats. So this is one of the new legendary effects. So this uh, has damage increasing as caps increase. So you get max plus 50% damage at 29,000 caps and beyond. In the description below, I've linked the wiki which tells you how the damage decreases as your caps decrease. But of course, you want to stay at you know at or beyond 29,000 caps. And it's not hard to do that nowadays because the cap limit has been increased from 30,000 to 40,000 caps. So you can still spend some caps while making most use of Aristocrats. But for sure, if you're a full health build, Aristocrat is a nice boost of damage because it actually rivals something like Junkied and you don't need to have addictions. You just need to have those caps in hand. So I would say anti-armor is still better for full health, but Aristocrats is a nice legendary effect for you as well. And then of course we have bloodied, so probably the most popular build in the game I would say. Damage increases as health decreases, plus 80% damage boost when you're below 20% health, in between 15 and 20% health. And you can actually go to plus 95% damage when you're below 5% health, but no one does that because you will die too quickly. So generally, you try and stay below between 15 and 20% health, and you get that plus 80% boost of damage. Maybe you go between 10 and 15% health to get plus 85% boost in damage, but you try not to go below that because you'll probably die. So obviously in terms of pure damage, and I'm going to mention quad in a second, but that's an exception in some circumstances. But in terms of damage, pure damage, bloody is still the way, the way to go in the game, if that's all you're concerned about, if you just want to deal as much damage as possible. And of course, you have all the other benefits with a low health build, unyielding armor, mutations, nerd rage, for instance. So you can really deal a lot of damage still nowadays with a bloodied build. Again, not as good as it used to be, but still the highest damage dealing legendary effect and build in the game for sure. 
But then you have vampires. So vampires is really popular nowadays. And it, this is why, because it, you gain brief health regen when you hit an enemy, and that's 1% of your HP for two seconds. And with shotguns, it heals per projectile. So shotgun vampire weapons and high rate of fire vampire weapons are really good because effectively you're getting healed faster than you're losing damage. And when you're a low health build, it pairs really nicely. Like I use a bloodied or a low health build and I have my main bloodied weapons, but if there's ever a situation where I don't want to die, I'll pull out a high rate of fire vampire's weapon, like a 50 cal for instance, and I just won't die. I'm getting healed so fast and I'm still getting a boost to my damage because I'm a low health build with mutations and nerd rage and whatnot. So vampires can still perform fairly well as a low health build. I actually made a video on that showing the differences between vampire and bloodied and vampire stacks up fairly well. Of course, it's not as good in terms of damage, but when you want to stay alive, it's definitely the way to go, especially with the new decryption daily up with the anti-armor enemies or the enemies with uh, armor-piercing rounds, and then things like Mr. Gutsy's with, with armor-piercing rounds. Vampires pairs really nicely with a low health build, and some consider it to be the best legendary effect currently in the game, especially when it's high rate of fire or shotguns. So for sure, use it if you're low health. If you are high health, you have less reason to use it because you know you have so much health that you don't really need to heal that fast. You can just use a stim pack when you lose some health. But definitely, if you are low health, use vampires for sure. But then we have quad. So you get quadruple ammo capacity, ranged only. Your clip size increases by plus 300% of your base clip. The reason why I mentioned this when I was talking about bloodied is because in certain circumstances, quad weapons actually have a better damage per second or DPS than bloodied weapons. And you might be confused by that because bloodied weapons have higher damage per shot. Yes, they do. But in, in two situations, so when you are versing boss enemies like a Scorch Beast Queen or, or Earl Williams in Colossal Problem, and number two, when you have a weapon with a really low clip size, like a fixer, for instance, in those circum circumstances, because you're not reloading as much, because you have quad ammo, and you're sh therefore you're shooting more against those enemies, you can actually deal more damage over time versus a bloodied user who's having to reload way more than you and is therefore not shooting as much, you know, than you. So obviously when they're both shooting at the same time, bloodied is doing more damage but as soon as bloodied starts to reload you're still shooting because you're not reloading because you have so much ammo in your clip so in those circumstances quad can actually have more dps than a bloodied build of course when you're doing you know killing regular mobs like ghouls and super mutants and whatnot you're not needing to reload when you're killing them so of course bloodied weapons perform better in those situations but when you're versing the boss uh, monsters and scorch beast queens and whatnot for sure quad can actually be better if you're constantly shooting and hitting your target it. So keep in mind quad for sure if you are any kind of build in the game really. So then we're moving on to the second tier. So furious. Damage, damage increased after each consecutive hit on the same target. Max plus 45% damage at 9 stacks. So effectively once you get 9 shots on an enemy you are getting plus 45% damage but you can, you can only focus on that enemy. You can't keep swapping between enemies because then you'll lose your stack but then you just need to build it up again and high rate of fire weapons are fairly good with furious because you can build that stack very quickly because it's only nine shots um low rate of fire weapons not so much and furious isn't as good as it used to be but i would still say it's still second tier for sure because you can get plus 45 percent damage it just has to change your play style you have to focus on one enemy at a time Gorman's one of the new ones, so your damage increases as you fill your hunger and thirst meters. You get max plus 24% damage at 81% full, so it boosts it by 12% for your well-fed meter or your, or your your food meter, and then 12% for your uh, hydration meter or your or your water meter, whatever you want to call it. So when they're both plus 81% uh, or beyond 81% full, then you get the plus 24% damage boost. Not the biggest boost to damage, but it's fairly consistent. Like it's more consistent and furious because, you know. Uh, your your hydration meter and your fed me meter doesn't drain that fast unless you actually have a disease or whatnot. So I, I think Gormans is probably lower in the second tier, but I would still consider it second tier for sure. So try it out if, if, if you're interested. And remember that when you have your food meters full and your hydration meters full, that you're getting a boost to your HP and your AP regen as well. So that's why Gormans is a nice build. Instigating double damage if your target is full health. It's not quite double damage. It is 100% of damage of your base damage. Um, and it only really is effective, I would say, with things like a lever action rifle or a hunting rifle, those kind of single shot weapons that have a higher damage per shot. And when you come across a new group of enemies that don't have it, you know, haven't been shot yet and have full health, I think that's the situation where instigating works well. 
instigating weapons still work on high rate of fire weapons they just don't work as well i would say and it's very situational like if you're playing with a team they can't be shooting those enemies because then your instigating effect doesn't really apply because they don't have full health anymore so for sure i would say instigating is still second tier but if you have your single fire weapons like a again lever action rifle hunting rifle sniper rifles etc uh, juggernaut so your damage increases as your health increases max 25 percent uh, damage at 95 percent health so this is if you're a full health tanky build and probably if you also have a vampire's weapon because you're trying to stay above 95 percent health at all times and if you're able to do that yes it's a nice little boost to your damage i would say of course though aristocrats is better because it's more consistent because as soon as you lose and go below 95% health, you're losing some of that boost to your damage. And you're not losing caps in the middle of a firefight, right? So for sure, Aristocrats is better. It's, it's a higher boost. It's more consistent. But if you get Juggernauts and, and you are a full health build, try it out, especially if you have a Vampire's weapon to keep you above 95% health at all times. Getting that little boost of damage is nice, but there are better effects out there. Junkies, so damage increases when suffering from addictions, max plus 50% damage at five addictions. So definitely the most in the second tier in terms of damage, I would consider it to be higher in the second tier, but of course you need to have five addictions. That's not so bad for some people that can manage that and they know how to do that. Um, but yeah, I, I wouldn't consider junkies as good as it used to be. It dropped down when the damage calculation changed, but I would still consider it to be second tier if that's your build like my junkie weapons when i sell them um they sell fairly quickly so i, I think it's a, still a relatively popular build mutant so mutants actually got a boost so now your damage increases by five percent for each mutation that you have so you get a plus 25 percent damage boost for at five mutations and most of you probably have five plus mutations anyways so again you're getting a nice consistent plus 25 percent damage boost which you don't necessarily get at juggernauts and you don't necessarily get with gormans so for sure in terms of the other plus 25-ish percent damage boost in, in tier two, I would say mutants is the best, but in terms of pure damage, junkies is the best in the orange category. And then you have two shots. So you shoot an additional projectile ranged only. Now it's not quite double damage. So each projectile has 62.5% damage of the, uh, of the base damage of the one projectile. So if both of them land, you effectively get 125% damage. Um, so it's pretty much a plus 25% damage boost if, if, if both projectiles land. So two shot is okay. It's nice. Your both projectiles tend to land on an enemy anyways. Um, so again, it means that you don't need to have mutations, but you probably have mutations. It means that you don't need to worry about your, your cat, uh, sorry, your, um, your food levels or your hydration levels. Um, it means you don't have to worry about staying above 95% health. So two shot is another one of those nice consistent ones. Um, so yeah, Use it if you want, but it's not as popular nowadays anymore. So now we get to the third tier. I will push through these. So you've got a bunch of the ones that increase your damage on specific enemies, and these have all been boosted. So then they're now all plus 50% damage to certain enemies. So assassins is plus 50% damage to humans, and that includes humans and players. It's still lower tier, but at least it's better than before. Berserkers, lower damage resistance increases your damage dealt. Yes, it is plus 50% damage, zero, zero damage resistance, but you have to, <laughs> you have to have, excuse me, uh, my voice is still a bit screwed up. You have to have no damage resistance. So probably not the best um, for you beginner players out there. It's a fun build if you're experienced and you want to mess with it, but there's, a, there's better ways to get 50% damage boosts like Aristocrats, for instance. So I would definitely try and get that over Berserkers. Then we have execu execu executioners, can't talk tonight, plus 50% damage when your target is below 40% health. It's only useful when your target is below 40% health. So maybe it's a build that you can pull out once they are a little bit more hurt and then you can finish them off a bit quicker. But again, there's more consistent plus 50% boost out there. Junkies is more consistent, Aristocrats is more consistent, which is why it is in tier three. Uh, exterminators, more damage to Milex and Bugs. Ghoul Slayers, more damage to Ghouls. Hunters, more damage to Animals. All the same thing, again, very situational against certain enemies. That's why they're low, lower tier. Um, mutant Slayers against Super Mutants, the exact same thing. Nocturnal actually got a bit of a buff. So now you don't get a debuff during the day. Your damage increases just at night and you get plus 50% damage. So yes, at night, no Nocturnal is nice, 
But again, situational, you have to play more at night with a nocturnal weapon. And then suppresses, reduces your target damage output by 25% for 5 seconds. Again, very situational. Maybe if you're versing the Imposter Sheep Squatch for, um, for so what's it called, for Encrypted, um, maybe that helps reduce the damage output of that enemy because it's so high. But there's a per card that does the same thing called Suppressor in Charisma. So I would say Suppressor is a, is a lower tier weapon as well. Uh, troubleshooters, more damage against robots, Zealous, more damage against Scorch, same thing. Medic, so your Vast Crits will heal you and your group. Ranged only, you get 5 HP per second for one second. Again, it's nice like to heal your enemies and to heal yourself, but to be honest, Vampires is better to heal yourself. And if you really want to be a teammate, sure, you can use Medic. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't consider it a top tier uh, weapon or, or effect for sure. And then Stalkers, so if you're not in combat, you get plus 100% bats accuracy at plus 50% AP cost. Again, ranged only, and it's multiplicative, so you get double bats accuracy and double AP cost. Again, I would consider it a low tier weapon or, or effect because you're not getting any boosted damage. It's just increasing your bats accuracy, which is fine, but you want to have some sort of boost to your damage or something else. So let's move on to the, the next uh, effects or the next uh, two star effects. So starting off with the explosive, one of the best ones, your bullets ex explode for area damage, range only projectiles explode for 20 percent of base damage and it's also improved by demo expert which is in intelligence i believe so explosive is one of the best two star effects out there for sure um especially against regular mobs in the game again ghouls super mutants and whatnot so if you have a weapon that has explosive you've definitely scored there and then you want to boost that with demo expert in, in intelligence um you probably want to go five, uh, a rank of five to increase it by as much as possible. And then you're getting a super, super high amount of damage per shot with an explosive weapon, especially if it's a bloodied explosive, for instance, too. And then, the, then the, I wouldn't say even it's the next best one. I would say it's equivalent. It depends on the weapon, but rapid. So you have a faster fire rate ranged only. So I would say the 25% faster fire rate is better against kind of boss monsters again. So your Scorch Beast Queens, your Milo Queens, your, your Earl Williams, your, your whatever it might be. Um, because it's not, it's increasing your damage in the sense that it's increasing your fire rate so you're getting more shots landed on enemies. So while you're wasting more ammo, you're still dealing more damage per second, right? So that's why faster fire, fire rate weapons are so good. And again, against those kinds of enemies, they're much more effective against boss against mobs and against super mutants and ghouls and lower level enemies you probably want to have explosive because it just kills them faster right and you're not using as much resources or ammo so that's how those two kind of fall my favorite weapon in the game is a bloodied fast fire fast reload uh gauss minigun it's freaking awesome it just shreds enemies um and that actually also has an explosive inherent effect, which is nice. Anyways, uh, melee weapon. So melee speed, 40% faster swing speed, melee only. This is the best second star for melee weapons for sure. P power attack damage, you get 40% more power attack damage. And th again, that's an additive ad uh, addition to damage. So not as good as melee speed because you're, sw you're swinging more. Excuse me. <coughs> You're swinging more and you're getting more damage per second because of that. But if you don't get melee speed and you get power attack damage, it's not a bad second effect to have. I would still consider it a top tier for your melee builds in the game. And then we have another new one for second tier, so inertial. You replenish AP with each kill, so plus 15 AP per kill. It means that you can, you're can you able to use... Excuse me. <coughs> my, <coughs> my voice is still not good. So... Um, when, you're, when you have inertial, it means you can use VATS more. It means you can use dodgy more. Um, it's actually a fairly decent second effect. So for sure, if you have inertial, try it out. Because if you keep getting kills and you keep getting your AP back, it means you're using those features a little bit more. So I like inertial. I haven't rolled it on my person yet, but I can see it being very effective. Lucky, so your VATS critical shots do 50% damage. Again, it's additive. It's nice. It's not one of the best ones out there. There is a perk card in luck that does the exact same thing. Um... But if you pull Lucky, you know, you might as well take that, especially if you use Vats a lot and you use Crits a lot. Hitman's plus 25% damage while aiming. That was boosted. It used to be 10, now it's 25. Again, ranged only, additive damage, and it's not including with, you know, Vats or Scopes. It has to be your Iron Sights. So hit, Hitman's at 25%. I think it's it's second tier now because just by aiming down the, your sight, you get another 25% boost of damage. That's awesome, especially if you have Aristocrats or Bloody or whatnot. It's actually a nice little boost for sure. And then you have Vats Enhanced, plus 50% Vats uh, Hits Chance, ra ranged only, and it's a multiplicative 1.5% chance. So if you're concerned about landing most of your shots in Vats, then Vats Enhanced is really nice, nice, but I wouldn't consider it a top tier effect. 
And then you have steady, plus 25% damage while standing still. This is melee only and it's additive damage, but it works while you're sneaking. So here's the thing, if you have a melee weapon and you're a sneak build for a melee build, for sure having steady is really nice, but you're getting even more boost to your damage. Is it as good as a increased swing speed? Of course not. You're gonna get more damage per second with that, but it's a nice second, like I would, actually, oh, is it? No, it's not, it's not, definitely not better than power attack damage, that's for sure. Um, but still, if you're a stealth build and you, and you get steady, it would do in a pinch for sure. Then you got crippling, so plus 50% limb damage. Um, and this is not HP, it's your, it's limb condition damage for enemies, which means they just cripple faster. So it's a lower tier effect for sure. Bashes, again, bashing damage increases by 50%. That's one of the increases to damage that's actually multiplicative. And it's very, like, maybe in the resilient, uh, or daily ops when you have resilient enemies, maybe bashing damage becomes useful then. But other than that, not really. Last shot, one of the new ones. So last round in a magazine has a 25% chance to deal uh, two times damage. It's not quite two times damage. It's plus 100% additive damage and it's ranged only. And it's only a 25% chance. So especially in, a, in weapons with high clips, when you're not activating that chance enough, it's not worth it. If you have a lower clip size, maybe last shot is more worthwhile. Um, but again, it's only a, a quarter chance. So I, I don't see it, it happening you know, that much for, for you if you use that effect. And then reposting, so it reflects 50% uh, of melee damage back while blocking, melee only. One of the lower effects for sure, for melee. My voice, I am losing it because I've been recording for so long, but I'm going to continue because I love you guys. Three star, that's enhanced. So one of the best for sure. 25% um, less VATS action point cost. Um, there's a reason why you hear about people wanting to get bloody 2525 fixes or quad 2525 weapons out there because it pairs really nicely. It means when you're using less VATS, uh, when, you, when you're losing, using less action point costs in VATS, you're able to get more shots in VATS more often until you, you know, regenerate AP and then you do it again. So it pairs really, really nicely, especially with a fast fire second effect. It's definitely one of the better ones, but you only need to use it if it's a weapon that utilizes VATS. Like if you have a heavy gun, for instance, like a Gauss minigun or a 50 cal that just eats AP in VATS, you don't really want VATS enhanced. The next one is the one that you want. You want faster reload, especially as a heavy gun because it reloads your heavy gun faster and they tend to have slower reload speeds. So I would say generally, if you have a gun that, use, that you want to use VATS uh, a lot for, have VATS enhanced. If you have a heavy gun or one that you know you don't use VATS for and you just want to reload faster, you have a small clip size for instance, the pepper shaker next month for instance, use rapid for sure. Then you got cavaliers for melee, you take 40% less damage while power attacking. Again, pairs nicely with the power attack damage second star. So if you get power attack damage and cavaliers, it's definitely a nice combo for sure. But really on melee, you want to get plus one strength. It gives you a little bit of boost to your melee attack, not by much, but it's a it's a it's a slight boost to your damage. And typically, what people want is melee speed together with plus one strength. That's the sweet spot when it comes to melee weapons in the game. And then another new one. So this is the second tier. Durability breaks 50% slower, especially with weapons like flamers that just degrade really fast. I would think durability actually comes, you know, quite in handy there. Again, there is a perk card that does the exact same thing called Gunsmith, but it saves you using five, you know, points in your build if you don't want to use Gunsmith. So durability, you would take in a pinch for sure, especially with those weapons that degrade really fast. Lightweight, 90% uh, reduced weight. This does not apply to weight uh, added by mods, but it's still nice for heavy guns especially that in and of themselves without any mods weigh a lot. So for sure lightweight in certain circumstances is good and still second tier, but with other weapons, maybe not so much when you're not, you don't really care about carry weight. And then lucky, your VATS critical meter feels 15% faster. Feeling 15% faster is not that much, but it's still nice for people that don't have their luck at 33 and aren't able to get you know, VATS crits every second shot. So for sure, you know, use it if you're struggling to get your critical meter filled fast and you want to use it more. But if you have your, your luck at 33 and you know who you are out there, you don't really need lucky at all. Then finally, so we've got plus one agility. It's fine. You have more AP, but it's definitely lower tier. Ghosts. Hits have a chance to generate a stealth field, ranged only, and it's only a 10% chance to grant invisibility for two seconds. So a 10% chance, which is low, and it's only two seconds of invisibility, so that's why it's kind of a lower, a lower level effect, or lower tier effect. Nimble, faster movement speed while aiming, ranged only, no vats or scopes, and it's plus 100% speed. Again, it's, it's 
not that useful um so i would consider it lower effect perception only plus one perception so again the, generally these plus to special effect ones aren't so good unless you're dealing with strength which actually boosts your weapon damage for melee so that's why i consider this to be lower level resilient i was umming and ahhing whether i should have put in that into into tier two especially when you have a heavy gun that reloads really slowly getting plus 20 250 damage resistance while you're reloading is not so bad but still, like, it, it doesn't really benefit you while you're shooting your gun, only in between and when you're reloading. So I would still consider it a lower level um, legendary effect. Steadfast, plus 50 damage resistance while aiming. Again, no vats or scopes. My bloodied explosive Gatling gun has this. Do I notice the plus 50 DR? Not really. It's very, very minor. But you'll take it. Like, if you're aiming down the site, you'll take it. Especially if um, you have the second effect, what is it, Hitman's, when you get an increased damage while you're aiming. Yeah, then that pairs nicely, for sure, with Steadfast. So you'll take that any day of the week. Um, but it's definitely not one of the best effects out there. Second last, Cavaliers, take 15% less damage while blocking, melee only. Um, that's why, you know, how often are you blocking in melee? Probably not that much. You're trying to swing as much as you can to kill your enemy as much as you can. And then endurance, plus one endurance for melee only. A little bit of a boost to your health, but really you want that plus one strength. And that's it. I'm sorry I pushed through that, but it's still probably going to be a long video anyways, and I'm losing my voice. Let's conclude. Alrighty, way senders, that's all from me. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And until next time, this has been the Lone Vault Wanderer. Please take care of yourselves, and would you kindly keep fighting the good fight.